Hello, everybody. So today I wanted to share with y'all a jig that I made to make uh, cylindrical tapered table legs. You could call them mid-century modern table legs, but they're really just tapered cylinders that were common in that design style. Uh, this is the 3D model of the jig that I actually made after the fact with uh, some improvements uh, based on my experience building it. Uh, I'll give you a walkthrough right here and we can get into the, the build video. So it's designed to be put into a table saw like this. This would be you standing at the table saw looking forward and move through the table saw like that. And because these parts are holding a piece of blank stock between them, when this edge goes through the table saw and this edge is at an angle, let's see, it moves at an angle here, it basically cuts from the wide part down to the thin part. And this is designed so that you can actually move the bottom part too, but I have it locked. And then that way when you push the, um, when you push it through, it's actually more like this, which makes this the small part and this the large part. I base this off of a design concept that I saw on uh, Bad Wolf Woodworks channel. I can link the video below in the uh, description. But basically, this part will slide. That, that'll allow you to give um, different size legs. One end of your blank uh, has a screw through one of these holes. These are for different blank sizes. The other end of your blank has a little uh, hammer-in threaded insert that then this bolt screws to. And when you cl close this on your blank, the screw allows it to pivot. And then when this is bolted in it, and this is locked down, the leg's not going to go anywhere. And you can, you can tighten this up so that there's enough frictional force that when you push it through the table saw, it, uh, it does not you know, it doesn't herky jerk around. Um, and I did a test cut with some pine, just running it through several times <clears throat> to get it down to, you know, several facets and it looked great. So, uh, let's, let's get the build process. So I began by ripping down some MDF. That's three quarter inch MDF. Um, and not pictured here is me actually screwing down this Wenge runner. So I cut that runner to three quarters of an inch, a little shy of three quarters of an inch to fit the table saw. And there I see I've already screwed it in and now I'm waxing the bottom slides nice. You may have to use something different. Uh, then that's half inch MDF. That'll be the top pivot plate. I chose Wenge because it has very good dimensional stability and laying, laying out the holes now for where the slide uh, slots are going to be, marking those out. And once the holes are all marked out, I'm going to take it over to the drill press and drill out the corners of the holes. And then we'll jigsaw. Well, I'll score them. I'm going to score these lines first and uh, route out the slot for the sliding part and then I put in a three quarter inch bit and and route out another slot on top of that and that gives me the clearance for the head of the carriage bolt that fits in there I had to actually uh, take another small pass and then the scoring helps keep a the chip out down I had to remind myself where exactly I was cutting now this has this triangular shape so that it can pivot along the arc and it just gives it more space to move around and then just cleaning up the edges uh, hand routing little raw dogging this takes some uh, practice and the same thing on the bottom so start with the Forstner bit to create the countersink for the carriage bolts and you want to use the bigger Forstner bit first because the uh, if you were to drill out a small hole, that little pin in the middle of the Forstner bit won't locate the hole, so you'll jump around. So now I'm using that little pin hole to drill out the actual screw hole. Tapping in the uh, 
carriage bolts to the lower base. You see they kind of clears it. And now we get to building the uh, mounts. So the mounts, which I'm gluing together here, are made out of three quarter inch plywood. The rear mount is two layers of three inch by seven inch screwed to two layers of two and a quarter inch by four inch. So there's a three inch overhang on the side of the jig. Uh, I marked out and spaced several screws, countersunk the screws um, to hold it together. And here I'm doing the movable base. So that's another, that's a seven, uh, that's a six by uh, three inch coupled to, um, I think it's a three and a half by three inch and then a, a gusset. What you may have just seen very quickly is there's a small piece of wenge that slides down that slot and that's glued and then there's a single screw that holds it. That that way the two carriage bolts plus that little wenge slider will keep the movable part on the track from moving around. There's a good view of it. And there, put some washers on and it slides up and down. And that's me gluing and attaching the fixed and movable parts. Now I got the whole jig together with uh, the carriage bolts, washers, and wing nuts. And here, not only am I setting it up for the first time, but I'm um, tuning where those holes would be. It's a little counterintuitive because you have to think of the largest dimension of the stock, which is along its diagonal, to provide clearance. <laughs> and I'm fighting with that bolt. So once I had a taper that looked fine, I locked everything down and we can start cutting. You start by taking several uh, large passes, basically turning a square into an octagon. And the blade doesn't always come through, but as you take off more material, it removes those chunks. And then at that point, you're basically shaving these little tiny facets. Um, 16 and gone, and then you know, more. And then I'm just spinning it, taking off a little bit of material, and it, it wouldn't take much more than a little bit of sandpaper on the lathe to make it a nice smooth leg. So I hope you enjoyed the build video. Please uh, like and subscribe, and never stop building.